I know that most updates are like, oh, this is cool. I get to do this X, Y, Z. If you're within the same page, you could have done the exact same stuff. All right, let's get this video out of the way. So Notion decided to drop an entirely new property called buttons. Yeah, that's right. There's a button now. And if you're wondering, the answer is yes. It's basically the exact same thing for the most part as what you've seen within Notion before as there was buttons like this one that can essentially edit a page, add blocks and do a lot of different cool things. However, instead of it being on a page, what it now is, is it can lie within a database. Simply go to a add a property bot right here. And then you'll notice that there is we type in button, something fancy and new called button. Personally, I think that this is a very interesting update, mainly for the reason that it doesn't quite do anything that the buttons themselves can't, except for maybe one small tidbit, which we'll see in this video. Small note here, if you adjust the name of this button to vote, this name of the property will adjust what you see here on the button. But if you wanted to add a individual name, you know, you could just change this to like vote here or something like that. You, you don't have to have it be the exact same. Now, in order to edit this, you click on edit property and then it does the action exactly like the other instance, except rather than you editing you know, other pages. It's just much more intuitive in order for you to edit this specific database item. So a great example of this would be if I were to create a number property and I'm just going to call it votes and go to vote here. And let's change this to a something like a ticket or something. Okay. Now for this button, what we can do here is either edit the property to be a specific item, which doesn't really make sense for the numbers. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to press edit pages in and then we're going to pick this page right now. If I click edit this vote property, right, you'd think I'd be able to do things like add a number or subtract a number, but I still can't. This is one of the main reasons I don't understand this update because there's an example video that came out like shout out to Thomas Frank. He's always the first one to showcase these updates because he's, he's like nice and efficient about it. But what I had a problem with is that in order for it to work, I essentially have to make this a formula, right? And then I have to make a property called voters. Okay. And then from here, what I can do is I can make it so that I'm basically like counting the voters, right? So say for example, here, I want to set it up so that this refresh, this ends up editing the voters, right? For the person who clicked the button and I have the option to either add, remove or toggle. So I'm going to put toggle here because with the voting system, you know, you can be like, I voted. Yay. Then I unvoted. Yay. And then finally, obviously, let's let's just change this so it actually counts the amount of voters in the formula rather than just showing the voters. And it's actually a pretty simple formula. Just type in the name of the property, put a little dot and then type length, right? So then from here, I can vote. Whoa, that's so cool. Now, what if I told you that if I were to make a button within here, I could change it so that since I'm inside of the page, I can click on voters, click on the person who clicked it, right? And then make it toggle and then just type out vote here <laughs> and then put the ticket emoji. And then guess what? It does the same exact thing. I'm not moved by this update, guys. I know that most updates are like, oh, this is cool. I get to do this X, Y, Z. If you're within the same page, you could have done the exact same stuff. It's just a matter of, you know, like you can experience it from the front end. So say, for example, I was on here and I wanted to put the, the vote situation, you know, onto the public, right? So just go here. Rather than having like a priority thing, I can put, let's do votes. Just place this out into the public here. And what I mean by public is into my you know, table view. I can click vote on and off. Okay, cool. Now, is there anything else that this can do that a button within the page can do? And by the way, just to emphasize, this isn't anything different. It's the same functionality. They just made it a property. No, not that I am aware of. Even for something that's this page related, if you're aware of it with date properties, you are able to update date properties using automations and buttons already. So say, for example, I were to click on this date property, I can pick now or today. This isn't new. 
I'm not trying to be negative, okay? I know sometimes that happens, but I have to call out some things sometimes. Cause gosh darn it, I don't really know what the heck the point of this update is, except for adding it as a property. Now, if this is a stepping stone towards some of the things that I want, then I'm happy, right? However, it's the same functionality, just shoved it into a property. So I don't really know how much I'm gonna be happy. If I was able to press vote here and able to set it to an incremental number improvement, similar to what Thomas Frank said in his video, we think alike in a lot of ways. If I could press this button and have it tick up a number, that would be much better or vote down, you know, whatever, whatever makes sense sort of thing. So I think voting down, voting up is a great example of this, but having it just go up and down a number works too. You don't need to have it associated to a voting property that has the person and have a formula that would be pretty excessive here. And the reason that this is kind of annoying is you'll notice just from dealing with this is that if you end up adding these buttons inside of it, it ends up adding an extra property to the workspace in some situations where you could just use the automations which do work really well. Seems like a lot of people are using the vote here in order to trigger the automation, which is a great manual alternative. However, there are a lot of instances where say I set it to, you know, make this button set my status to complete. And then after it sets it to complete, it does another action. Yeah, I could just make it so that when this gets set to complete, you know, in the uh, automation, that's a thing. Right, so when status is complete, edit the property. I could do that already. I mean, I, I get kind of the, the manual component, but this is also a manual component because the automations only trigger if you do a certain thing. So like, I don't really understand the extra point of having the extra property. It's not gonna save you much time because the automation would save you a similar amount of time. And maybe it's just one button click instead of two, but in the same breath, you're taking up valuable UI UX space and kind of, in my opinion, making your integrity of the you know, backend data structure worse by just spamming a bunch of different, you know, buttons in a lot of circumstances for what people are gonna get into with this. I know the video Thomas used, and I'm actually gonna make a whole video on the data integrity problem that's gonna happen because of this update if people aren't careful. But you can end up accidentally making a bunch of buttons if, if you're not careful with this. The other knock on this is, I'm just gonna say it how it is. You coulda, mm, don't get mad. You coulda just, set it up so that this button at minimum would have triggered some sort of webhook. And then it would have essentially grabbed the data from this information and connected to something like make.com or Zapier. I know this is something that I talk about sometimes on the channel, but a lot of automation stuff that you can do with third-party applications is utilized with something called a webhook. Essentially, I could press this button and have it spit out all this information and then run an automation based off this. Lucky for you, there's another fellow Notion fanboy that did create an app where you can actually press a button and it will do said things. It's an embed situation currently, which is really cool. You know, they're ahead of the curve in comparison to Notion. And essentially you can, you know, connect this link and then data that's embedded into something like this user education page would then be able to be pushed back through an automation by pressing the button embedded on the page. So other people are doing it. This guy's just a dude. I'm not saying that in a negative context. I'm just saying that Notion was valued at $10 billion last year and is behind somebody who's just bootstrapping it while also doing a completely other subset of things that isn't running the company that is Notion. So hot take. That would have been a nice update. I know that there's a lot of different things going on. So please just take this as a Dimitri wants the product to be better. Don't take it as a I hate you. This is a dumb product. I think products moving forward. I just wanted to point out some of the critiques because honestly, I don't really see the benefits of this versus the old system outside of being able to click it in a table view or inside of any of the other views. It's not just limited to a table view. It also can be done in things like a list view, etc. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know how moved you are by it. Also, let me know your thoughts on this video on how to improve your skills using productivity tools even more.